The clock is ticking to be heard and be counted. Some community activists making a last minute push to have everyone they can fill out the census. I'm Devin Clark. Coming up, we'll tell you why they're heading to the polls. Dueling town halls for President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden tonight. I'm Nadia Romero. Outside of the White House, I'll break down what's at stake for the candidates and voters. The long anticipated cold front is moving through as we speak. Get ready for big changes tomorrow. I'll let you know how much cooler it's going to get and how long it's going to last. Coming right up. As a result of the pandemic, many large gathering events have been canceled. We're going to take a look at those that are still a go and the modifications they're making to keep everyone safe. Streaming bills are almost as high as cable bills. So can you get a wide variety of content for as little as $25 a month? We'll show you. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, time is running out to fill out your 2020 census and be counted. This after the U.S. Supreme Court blocked a lower court decision to extend data collection through the end of the month. With the clock ticking, community activists are heading to polling sites, hoping to get voters who haven't completed the census to fill out what's called the short form. Devin Clark tagged along and gives us a look. Well, you need to be a counterfeit. Even though Emil Carter already filled out his census form, he was happy to see B. Michelle and Nika Cleaver with the Dream Big Scholarship Fund out at the polls working to make sure that everyone is counted. At the end of the day, it brings money. It, it helps us get resources. All of the all of the parts of the community that are the most vulnerable are get or get help through the census. Cleaver and Michelle are handing out census swag bags. So we have these swag bags here with these nice, lovely shirts. At polling sites in minority communities on the east side, hoping to build excitement about filling out the census. As we all know, or maybe you don't know, that African Americans are typically underrepresented in the census. The first stop was the Claude Black Center, where they met Maria Ann Vargas, who had not yet filled out the census. But after hearing that taking five minutes to fill out the short form could bring resources to her community, she was all in. I'm also believing in the census because we need this to be counted in the 2020 in the ballot so that way we can make a change. And even though today is the last full day to fill out the census, it will be available to be filled out until 5 a.m. tomorrow central time. You can do it online or by phone. Of course, we have all the details right now on KSAT.com. Reporting on the east side, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. We've got an update now on a deadly crash we first told you about on Tuesday. The victim has been identified as 63-year-old Alberto Cruz Armenia. San Antonio police say he died after he ran across South Zar Zamora and was hit by a driver. EMS tried life-saving measures, but he died at the scene. Police say the driver did stop to help and is not expected to face charges. An 18-year-old man and 16-year-old girl facing some charges after the Bear County Sheriff's Office says that they robbed another man at gunpoint. According to the Sheriff's Office, Jared Mata and a 16-year-old girl met up with a 17-year-old victim at an abandoned house in West Bear County on Tuesday. During that meetup, Mata pulled out a weapon and demanded the victim's car keys, wallet, and cell phone before taking off. The victim called the Sheriff's Office after knocking on doors in the area. Sheriff's deputies located both Mata and the teenage girl. They now each face a charge of aggravated robbery. Mata also charged with unlawful carry of a weapon. The San Antonio police are looking for the person who shot a man while driving yesterday. They say the victim stopped near I-10 and 410 around 7 o'clock last night, called police saying he'd been shot. The victim told officers the suspects were tailgating him, drove around him, and then started shooting at his car. The man was hit in the calf and grazed on his back. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. At last check, though, no arrests have been made. A new at five charges against a bartender who was accused of drugging and sexually assaulting two women at a downtown hotel have been dropped. We first reported about the arrest of Dillinger Hackett back in 2018. He was accused of drugging the drinks of two women while he worked at Taco Land. However, after two years, that case was dismissed due to insufficient evidence. Police then decided to, I guess, send out their samples for further testing, which um, confirmed that there was, in fact, no drugs in their system. There was other inconsistencies that just didn't make sense with, with what their narrative was. She says Hackett is now trying to rebuild his life while the criminal case is closed. Both Hackett and the women who accused him have both filed claims against each other in civil court.
Tonight was supposed to be the second presidential debate between Joe Biden and President Trump. But now, instead of sharing the stage, the candidates are going to participate in separate town hall events happening at the same time. Nadia Romero is in Washington with a preview of the dueling presidential town halls. Nadia. Well, Ursula, it's going to make for an interesting night, right? And especially when you look at key states. So in Texas, uh, President Trump has about a five-point lead over Joe Biden in most polls. But in battleground states like North Carolina and Ohio, Joe Biden is beating President Trump. And this really matters for those undecided voters who will have to flip back and forth between channels to try to figure out how the two candidates match up. President Trump and Joe Biden won't be in the same place. How you doing, man? How you doing? I'm on the same stage. President Obama and him left me 128 judges to fill. Answering the same questions. First for you, sir. Finally, for the for the vice president. I hope neither of you will interrupt the other. Instead, they will participate in town halls like this one. Welcome to our town hall with President Trump. Solo, but at the same time in swing states with President Trump in Miami and Biden in Philadelphia. And actually, I'd like to watch him because I want to see if he can make it through the program. The second presidential debate scheduled for Florida shelved after the commission that holds the debates wanted to switch to a virtual format in light of President Trump's COVID diagnosis, but the president refused. I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. That's not what debating's all about. You sit behind a computer and do a debate. It's ridiculous. Now, President Trump and Joe Biden will take questions from voters. Hello, I want to thank you, sir, for having me here and taking my question. On potential topics such as the coronavirus pandemic, the stimulus fight on Capitol Hill, and the future of the Supreme Court. You'll know my opinion of court packing when the election is over. During the dueling town halls, the candidates will both attempt to convince voters they are the right choice for the job. President Trump trails Biden in national polls. In swing states, he is only tied at best, as more than 17 million have already cast ballots. Time is running out to shift the trajectory of the race. So President Trump will have his town hall on NBC News and earlier today he was in North Carolina saying that he's been tricked and that he will be bamboozled into getting into this debate and that it will be unfair during his town hall even though the Trump campaign agreed to do the town hall with that network and agreed to the terms. But that's just laying the groundwork for what could be a contentious town hall. Joe Biden will be on ABC News and like I said before you have to switch back and forth to see the both. Uh, the first time and the last time we'll be able to see them on a debate stage before for Election Day will be next week in Nashville. Live outside of the White House, I'm Nadia Romero. Ursula, back to you. Thank you, Nadia. Now, don't forget, if you haven't made it to the polls yet, there are about 15 days left in early voting. You can find a full list of polling sites and hours right now on our website. Just go to ksat.com slash vote. Early voting ends Friday, October 30th. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. All right, this camera is going to start bouncing around as we have the higher winds starting to pick up with the cold front that's moving through town as we speak. Actually, let's take a look at the radar imagery and you can really see the front, the leading edge of that colder air mass right now, bisecting Bear County as we speak, basically right along Highway 90 and I-10. This little line here, that's basically just insects and such that get kicked up by that high wind and then detected by the radar. So it's one way to see the cold front that's moving into town. Another way is looking at the winds. North winds here through most of the county at this hour, 10 miles per hour, Bernie area 13 steady at the airport. But these winds are going to continue to ramp up through the evening and through the night. It's going to be a gusty night ahead of us and even to start the day tomorrow. Temperature wise, the cooler air is lagging behind that front, so it's going to take a little while for us to really feel the effects in terms of temperatures. Divine's at 90, 91 Panamaria, Maria, 83 in West Kerrville right now, and for the most part, we've got some 90s and 80s on the map, 90 degrees Universal City in Mico right now at 86. We're going to talk more about this cold front, what it means for your Friday, how long the cooler temperatures will last once they settle in, and we have Noah's winter outlook that as well coming right up. Thank you, Adam. And while the pandemic forced the cancellation of dozens of events that drew large crowds here, including Fiesta, a couple of major events are still set to go with modifications. The San Antonio Rock and Roll Marathon will be held December 5th through the 6th. Runners will not be required to wear a mask, but they will be separated in groups as they go through the starting line, and there will be stringent cleaning of all convention facilities. 
The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is still planned for February 11th through the 18th of next year, but it will not be in the AT&T Center. It's going to be in the Freeman Coliseum where it's been held in the past. In order to adhere to all of the current guidelines set forth and social distancing, um, that was the most viable option for us was to utilize the Freeman Coliseum in that manner. They're calling it Retro Rodeo. I like it. Lauren Side said they'll be closely watching the COVID numbers and will remain flexible to make any adjustments the numbers dictate. Have you seen a cat with wings or maybe a snake with legs? Well, it may sound unusual, but these mystical creatures made of wood or paper mache are a common sight in Mexico. They are called alebrijes and are part of our Day of the Dead coverage. Isis Romero takes us to Mexico to learn more about their history. Bueno, los alebrijes los inventó Pedro Linares del Estado de México. The alebrijes of Mexico have a history as colorful as the art itself. It all began in 1936 with artist Pedro Linares. At the age of 30, he became ill with a fever and began to have some interesting dreams. Él ya se encontraba en un estado como grave y empezó a alucinar. Él veía figuras extrañas y escuchaba una voz con una palabra, él no sabía qué. That word that he kept hearing in his dreams, alebrijes. When he woke up, Linares began recreating these mysterious animals with paper mache. As they grew in popularity, artisans also began crafting them out of wood. Está compuesto por diferentes partes de animales. Entre más extraño sea, es un verdadero alebrije. Está compuesto, por ejemplo, con patas de jirafa, cabeza de león. Los que ya tienen forma determinada se les conoce como figuras de madera. Eh, ahora son originarios del estado de Oaxaca. Because they are handmade, no two alebrijes are alike. They obviously come in lots of different colors and they range in size from very large to very small. Son animales místicos. Que por ejemplo, si es un dragón, tiene cuernos de toro o algo así. Esos son animales raros. Entonces eso es un alebrije. Hecho a mano, porque los alebrijes son diferentes. And just like they're a common sight in certain parts of Mexico, they're also a common sight during Day of the Dead. Alebrijes are sometimes placed on altars and even used as decorations for the special celebration. In Guanajuato, Mexico, Isis Romero, KSAT 12 News. It's all about the imagination. Don't forget to join us for our special Day of the Dead virtual presentation. It's happening on October 30th from 8 until 10 p.m. I've been carrying one of those in my purse for years. Now you know what it's called. I didn't know what it was called. There you go. Are you paying a high dollar for your cable TV? There are dozens of ways to stream your favorite TV shows at a much lower price. How to cut the cord and save some money next. New at five. How much are you paying to watch TV? Whether you go the traditional cable route or have switched over to streaming services, it is a monthly bill that seems to just get bigger and bigger. So how does $25 a month sound? 12 Under Size Marilyn Morris shows us how it can be done. Daphne Pena cut the cord because her cable bill was too much. We were streaming more and it didn't make any sense to pay for something that we weren't using. With so many streaming options, some people are now paying as much for those services as they were on cable. Families have different interests and different favorite shows, so can you get a wide variety of content and channels for $25 a month? Consumer Reports tech editor Jim Wilcox came up with a package that includes CBS All Access, a Disney Plus bundle, and Peacock, NBC Universal's new offering. For sports fans, CBS All Access has NFL games through 2022, plus Super Bowl 55, and you get NCAA basketball and PGA golf. 
plus CBS programs and content from BET, Comedy Central, MTV, and more with limited commercials. It's six dollars a month. The Disney Plus bundle includes Hulu and ESPN Plus for thirteen dollars a month. For families with kids, Disney Plus has the Star Wars franchise plus movies from Marvel and Pixar. Hulu offers shows from popular channels like ABC and Fox, plus classic TV shows, Hulu originals and movies, and ESPN adds more sports into the mix. The last piece of the streaming puzzle is the $5 a month ad-supported tier of Peacock. With it, you get next day access to NBC's current shows and content from Bravo, Sci-Fi, Telemundo, and USA Network. Altogether, that's about $24 a month. We also have an antenna because we like to watch local news. And of course, local broadcast channels are free. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. That's what I was gonna say. Just put, on, put the antenna on top of the house. True. Go old school, get a digital antenna, a new school antenna, really. Yeah, yeah. and it, the, it, it's great quality. You're it speaking is. from experience. I am speaking from experience, yeah. It's good stuff. Now, we do have a cold front moving through right now. We have a lot to talk about this evening, a lot to talk about. So let's talk about our headlines here. Cold front is moving through right now. The cooler air really lags behind that front. So you'll notice the big changes tomorrow, and that's when it's going to be significantly cooler. Most of the day will be spent in the 60s. We'll talk about those temperatures in more detail coming up. We also have NOAA's winter weather Outlook, which was issued today. So I'm going to start with that. We do have a La Nina that's in effect. So in turn, that favors above average temperatures here in Texas and of course San Antonio. Actually a pretty good chance, 60 to 70 percent chance of above average temp above average temperatures in our neck of the woods. You look at precipitation and unfortunately the La Nina pattern favors rainfall across the northern tier of the country. Well, and of course, snowfall. But around here, typically La Nina is dry, so same chances, 60 to 70 percent chance of being below average in terms of precipitation. Again, that's NOAA's forecast uh, that came out earlier today. So becoming windy this evening, the wind's starting to pick up right now. Temperatures will gradually start to fall off. I mean, we're talking 75 by 8 p.m., 67 at 10 p.m., so a much quicker drop in temperatures this evening than what we've previously had, and that's because of this cold front. You see the north wind that has kicked in for most of our area? Well, that's the front, and behind it, you have the north wind. Right now, steady at about 15 miles per hour from Del Rio to Hondo, San Antonio, New Braunfels, and it's going to continue to surge southward, and those of you east of I-35 that haven't really felt the front yet, it's going to hit you momentarily. Temperatures, though, take some time to cool off behind this front. Look at out ahead of it, Catula at 98, 91 Carrizo Springs, and then temperatures gradually fall off behind it. Kerrville 83 in Fredericksburg right now at 82. And then you have to get up into the panhandle for the 60s at this hour, and even Dallas right now at 69. And of course, the core of the cold air is bottled up closer to the Canadian border where temperatures at this hour are only in the 40s for them. So this cold front, the core of it's going to stay around the Great Lakes, but we're getting clipped by it. So we'll have a few days of noticeable changes. As for rainfall, precipitation, not much associated with this, at least not for us. Right along the front, you see the shower activity along the Ohio Valley area. Here though, uh, a few stray showers tonight, mainly south and southeast of San Antonio, and that's going to be it. And our future cast indicates the same thing. Notice by 7 p.m., maybe a rogue shower closer to the coastline. We go through the night tonight, a stray shower too, especially east of I-35 and closer to the Gulf coastline, but that's it. And overall, I just think the low clouds are just gonna settle in and we could have a few sprinkles here and there tonight into the first part of the day tomorrow. So let's talk temperatures. Tomorrow morning at sunrise, 56 in San Antonio, 55 in Fredericksburg, 59 in Gonzales and 59 in Honda. Then we get into the afternoon and it looks like we'll squeeze in some late day sunshine. So making it into the lower 70s for most of us. But that means a good chunk of the day will be spent in the 60s to right near 70 degrees. Low morning clouds to start still windy for the first part of the day tomorrow. A northeasterly wind tonight you'll notice the wind and through the first half of the day tomorrow you'll notice the wind, but it's blowing in that drier, less humid air. Only making it in the low 70s tomorrow afternoon with some late day sunshine. And then on Saturday, we start the day in the mid 50s again, climb into the upper 70s, a lot of sunshine. Good day to get some Halloween decorations out if you 
don't lose them down at your neighbor's yard tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lock them down. Thank you, Adam. All right. Good to hear from Dak Prescott. Yeah, and a very uplifting message he delivered today through social media. When we come back, Dak, Dak speaks out today for the very first time since a gruesome injury. And the Falcons are forced to close their facility. And we have breaking news regarding our big game and our big game coverage coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. For the first time since suffering his gruesome ankle injury that has knocked him out of the rest of the season, Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott is talking. Dak took to his Instagram account today to thank everyone for the outpouring of support and affection after he suffered a compound fracture and dislocation of his right ankle during the third quarter of the Cowboys' 37-34 victory over the Giants and was rushed to the hospital for immediate surgery. I just want everyone to know that I'm doing well um, and I can't thank you enough for all your, your love, your support, your prayers um, over the last few days. They've been more than overwhelming um, from, from, from teammates to family to friends uh, to fans I don't know to former and current players around the league and players around um, all sports. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, they're definitely appreciated and received well. So. Um, just knowing that I have that much love and support out there makes a huge difference um, in great spirits headed to see the doctor headed to see my leg for the first time post surgery. Uh, so just ready to start this road to come back. Now, while the timeline for Dak's return is believed to be between four to six months away, his counterparts in Texas, the Houston Texans, are preparing for their Sunday showdown with the undefeated Titans in Tennessee. Quarterback Deshaun Watson was asked if he's been able to reach out to Dak since his season ending injury last Sunday. I did. Uh, I. Uh wrote him on Twitter and then I also test him and you know he's probably got so much going on and and you know prayers out for him and his family and you know these next six months is going it's going to be a challenge but he's that type of person that's going to handle all that he's going to have a great support cast and um, everyone in the NFL um, especially in the quarterback position is going to you know lift them up and send our prayers towards him. As if the Atlanta Falcons haven't had enough problems this year, winless after the first five games, firing both their head coach and general manager. Now this, the Falcons have been forced to shut down their facilities after at least one positive test to a member of the staff, not a player, according to ESPN. As of right now, the Falcons game against the Minnesota Vikings, set to go for Sunday, is still on. And the big game and our big game cover just got postponed. That's after Steel High School announced on social media that their game against Wagner scheduled for tomorrow night at Lindhall Stadium has been postponed until November the 5th. That's a Thursday at 7 p.m. More after this. Ah, just another really big reminder to spell check. Ask the oh. person who misspelled library. They spelled it L-I-B-R-A-R-E-Y. Yeah, it's not the way there's no E. It was part of a street marking painted in the parking lot at the Indianapolis Library Services Center. A library employee says a contractor was responsible for the misspelling. The Indianapolis Public Library says, yeah, it's an error and they're going to correct it. <laughs> I hope so. Ouch. See you back here at 6.